Hi, a welcome to episode 40 of the New England Gal Knits podcast. I am Janet and I'm coming to you from Essential Massachusetts where I live with my husband, our two kids, our cat, and our dog. You can find me on Instagram at the New England Gal and also my hand dyes yarn and bag shop at Woolen Lights on both Instagram and on Ravelry. And for returning viewers, welcome back. And for any new viewers, welcome to the podcast. I hope you enjoy it. If you do, please consider uh, giving this a thumbs up and also subscribing to the channel. So I hope all of you guys are doing well. We have had such a crazy last week. Um, no, never mind that it was a full moon and we were all off. The boys were at each other's throats. I um, think we're getting sick of being stuck in the house together. And then on top of that, we did have a storm, a tropical storm come through and we lost power for a couple days. So never mind having the teenage boys who don't want to be in the house, but then they have no electricity, no electronics. They have plenty of summer reading to do, but they just, I guess, were not in the mood for that. So it's been a long week, and with the power outages, I'm a little late filming this, but better late than never. So I do have quite a bit of knitting to show you. I did cast on two new projects, and, um, yeah, I've gotten a little bit done on some of the other ones, but not so much. I got I got distracted and sidetracked and went off on that. I have a little bit of sewing to share with you, and I can tell you all my woes about the quilt that I'm working on. And then, um, yeah, no cross-stitching today because, um, yeah, haven't touched it since I talked to you guys last time. So I guess I will start with the knitting. So let me, so in my little bucket bag here, I actually have two projects. So let me start with the, I've got all this stuff here. There we go. All right, I'm gonna start with the one you guys have already seen. So this is the Rock Pool Sweater. And this is by uh, Kate Lily France, and this is being knit out of my hand dyed yarn um, in the 100% Superwash Merino base in the Guava colorway. And I have, I am working on the sleeve. I, I'm gonna love this sweater when it's done. Um, but I haven't been working on the sleeve, and it's super easy. Um, can do it while watching TV or listening to a book or watching YouTube videos without much thought, which is very nice, and I don't even have to refer to the pattern anymore. So, and then it has this little nice little detail going up the seam of the sleeve. So I have been slowly working on that. I am finding Lace just takes so much longer to knit, um, but I'll get there eventually. I'd like it done for September. We're already at, is it September 9th? Yep, Ooh, September. We're at August 9th. So I have a couple weeks. I can get that finished, and let me just show you the yarn balled up here. So this is it. So the next sweater that I am working on is literally a labor of love. So let me show you a picture. So this is the morning cup sweater and this is by Tiffany Kerr. Sorry for all the crinkling. This is by Tiffany Kerr um, of Twill and Print and it's really, really cute. Cups of coffee and then there is an alternative um, alternative um, chart words just I was gonna say aren't coming to me today they they never come to me but um, so there is an alternate chart to do little teacups instead of coffee mugs so I'm choosing the coffee mugs because coffee is my favorite thing in the whole entire world and let me show you what I have done here so here is 
what I have so far on the yoke. Um, so a couple things with this. This is actually being knit out of, I had purchased a while ago when she first came out with this pattern. Um, she was selling kits for it that came with a progress keeper, which is actually upstairs right now. Um, the yarn for the sweater as well as um, there's a print and you think you can only see the bottom of it that I have hanging there by um, it's Ursa Yarns from Canada and I can't remember Paula can't remember her last name but I'll have everything in the show notes um, did a print for this um, sweater and I absolutely love it so I have it framed hanging down here so this is all being knit. Here are all the colors out of Hello Seller yarn. And this is what I have so far. So this is the main body. This is the little hearts and the teacups. This will be the little spoon hanging out of the mug. And then this is the background color for the yoke. And now I have to say, this is not my first color work project. It's not even my first where I could say, oh, superwash merino it's harder to do color work because it, it, it's not i've done superwash merino yarn color work before but i am having a lot of puckering there's a couple rows where it's three colors which i've never done before i've only done two colors and there's a lot of having to catch the floats in the back so it is it is getting tedious, but again, I love it, and I know it's some of it's a little bunchy, but I'm hoping that will all block out or close enough. And even I don't know what's going on. I did so the again words not coming to me. The short rows. Um, it gave directions for the wrap and turns. I did German short rows because I find them easier to do and normally you don't notice them as much but for whatever reason I'm hoping that'll get a little bit better once I block it. I don't know. We'll see. What do you guys think or is there a way to fix that? I don't want to rip back. I'm hoping. I'm just going to keep pulling. I'm hoping once I block it. If not, I could probably sew it up a little bit. So anyways, I spent basically yesterday morning sitting on the couch working on this. And I do love color work. Um, but like I said, I think doing, I'm almost done this row and then I have another three color row, which I'm just, I am not a fan of. The yarn gets, although I am getting better with not having the yarn twist and working that out. So that's been a plus. I've kind of figured that out, but it's literally, I work on the couch with the sweater and I have the balls of yarn all separated nicely so I can try and make sure I'm not getting all tangled and knotted up and things. So those are the sweaters I'm working on. So next I'm going to jump over to socks. Now I have not worked on my Coffee Talk socks at all. I typically work on those in the morning um, while I drink my coffee. And to be honest with you, I've been getting up, working, jumping right on the computer and starting work at about quarter of six every morning. We've been so busy. So I haven't had a chance to really knit in the morning. Um, but I did make some progress. Look at this mess. It's <laughs> on my um, vanilla socks that I am working on. And there's a tale of woe with these as well. It seems like that's been the story, <laughs> the story lately, but Anyways, I, here we go. So I have gotten almost the foot almost done on the first sock. I'm working on the toe decreases now. So, and this is being knit out of Knit Picks Felici in the Toucan colorway. So have this one almost done. I don't know why I stopped working on 
the toe, but I did, and I decided to jump over to the second sock. So here is what I have of the second sock, and here is where my tale of woe comes in. So, on my first sock, I had messed up on the counting, and I had 32 stitches on the top of the leg and 36 stitches on the bottom half of the leg or front back I guess of the legs top foot of uh, yeah top bottom on the foot but I started doing the heel on the 32 stitches not the 36 so it's not going to match what's on this so at least this should be a fairly easy oops losing stitches. Fairly easy fix because I can just go in and um, pick up the stitches and then um, take off the bottom half of what I have done of the heel. So I'm going to actually probably work on that um, while I edit this video. So that is my vanilla socks that I am working on. So hopefully I can get these. I need to finish the, the first the first sock because it's really almost done. But look at it is it is a mess and all tangled up. So that is it for the socks I've been working on. And then as if the new sweater cast on wasn't enough, I decided to cast on a another project and this I'm going to talk about this bag in um, sewing. This is just being housed out of a bag that I had sewed. Um, so was it last week or two weeks ago? Should we pattern? So Andrea Mowry came out with a new uh, shawl pattern and here it is. It's the Cinnabar shawl and it is knit out of spin cycle yarns. I have never knit with spin cycle before and I have to say as far as purchases go with yarn and all of that I have not um, bought a lot since this has all gone down here in the United States. I have not bought yarn before the spin cycle yarn I had not bought yarn since probably January or February, so I decided, because we've been, you know, saving and saving and saving, that I would treat myself um, to some yarn for this project. So here's what... So here's what I bought. So this is just their Wilder base and this is in the dark gray color and then I paired it with they were having kits and the kits were discounted so this is summer love which honestly is not a color I would graduate to graduate gra gravitate words <laughs> um, it's not a color I would gravitate towards however um, whatever it is about the greens and the yellows of this uh, just um, caught my attention. I thought it was something different um, in that I didn't knit with or have so far. So here is, and I just started this last night, and it is honestly oh, it's so relaxing. And here is what I have so far. You can see this hole right there, but I don't, uh, I think I'm just going to stitch it up once I'm done. I don't know what I did there, but um, I am knitting these on, um, these are Plymouth Yarn Bamboo Needles. So now I just said I haven't um, bought any yarn or anything really knitting related since February. However, I don't like these. The yarn's really sticking on them. It's, um, and then it's catching on the joint here. 
So I did end up purchasing a pair of chow goo um, needles. So I can't wait to get those in and transfer this over. So, and I do, see I love fades. However, I, I've started a lot of fade projects and I just don't, I love the way the fades look. I do not enjoy the process of knitting the fades because um, sometimes you've got three balls all at once and we've already talked about how I don't like the three ball color work and then they get all tangled and I don't enjoy it. So this yarn is just perfect for that and like I said it's a splurge. Um, I normally would never spend that much money for yarn for especially a shawl, a sweater. I might um, however, I wanted something different, and like I said, we've been saving, we haven't been spending, we've been really good, so I had enough tucked away to be able to splurge on this. So that is it for my works in progress, and I know there were quite a few. Um, at first I kind of felt bad, I just keep casting everything on, I'm not finishing anything, and I was getting kind of hard on myself, but I'm not a monogamous knitter. I will never be a monogamous knitter. I, to be honest with you, I have been diagnosed with ADD, so I get distracted easily. I go on to, from one thing to another, shiny new object, and I'm, I'm done. So, but I enjoy what I'm doing, and honestly, that is all that matters. I know there have been people who have come into this house and have said, Oh my god, I can't believe how many projects you have on your needle. It is what it is. <laughs> and you know what? I'm enjoying myself, so why why should anyone else's opinion matter? So, I guess on to sewing. So, I guess we'll talk about my quilt woes. So, last Sunday, I ended up with a, a really bad allergic reaction and having to take some Benadryl and decided after taking the Benadryl that it would be a good time <laughs> to sew. Do not, do not sew when you're medicated with Benadryl that makes you, <laughs> makes you drowsy. So I got a third row, so I had only had two rows done of this, so I have a third row done. Everything lined up really well. Um, then I started sewing a fourth row and <laughs> Can you see how off these seams are? Um, so I'm not 100% sure what I've done. However, I know I need to pick this apart and figure it out. Do not, do not sew when medicated. I'm saying it to myself, not to you guys. Um, although it's a, probably a good thing to uh, live by. But anyways, and for those of you who are just kind of tuning in and haven't seen this before, this is the French Quarter Jelly Roll Quilt pattern, and I'm knitting it in a white Kona with a Tulip Pink Handmade Jelly Roll. So I have next Friday off, so I'm hoping to unpick it and fix all this. And yeah, that's my tale of woe on my quilt, so we'll get there eventually. Um, Oops, I'm trying to put it back as neat as possible. Um, then my other sewing project, and I wanted, I don't know if any of you guys, so I'm, so I sewed this project bag, and I, I wanted to kind of design it on my own, and a couple things, um, I put the leather handle like this because I thought it would be nice to, you know, be able to hold it here and knit I'm not quite sure I like the leather handle positioning, so we'll see. But I knit this, knit this, I sewed this out of wax canvas. And I don't know, it's the first time I've ever sewed with wax canvas. I don't know if this is typical and that the wax will eventually come off, but I feel like it's very greasy right now. Um, maybe it's the type of wax in the material that I bought. 
I don't know. Anyone have any ideas? Because I do love wax canvas. I love the fact that it's waterproof. I love um, that it doesn't stain easily. However, and I do like, and I know a lot of people don't, but I kind of like that worn, crinkle look that you get with the wax fabric. I just feel like this one is overly saturated. And I don't know if it's the type of wax that was used, um, or if there's a way to kind of lift out some of that wax without taking it all out. Um, any thoughts on this would be, um, be great if you guys had any suggestions on that. But that is it for my sewing. You know what, the bottom doesn't feel as bad as the top does. Maybe once the air hits it more, because when I ordered it, it came wrapped in saran wrap, so maybe as the air hits it, it'll dry it out more. I'll let you guys know, and if you guys have any thoughts or ideas, let me know. Um, anyways, that is about all I've been doing. Um, like I said, this week it really... that We had the storm that we lost power which with two teenage boys with no power luckily most of it was overnight but um there was that fear so we lost power at 6 p.m on tuesday didn't get it back to um 10 o'clock on wednesday morning and there was that fear of what if i have the whole day and i have to entertain these boys they've been bored out of their mind to begin with um just being stuck at home and then normally they've got boy scout camps and they go to with friends we go to the beach normally we've been to the beach already five times um this year but it's just one of those years that we haven't i thought maybe i would take the boys down to newport because i had friday off this coming friday off um however um massachusetts which i have to say uh, Governor Baker's done a great job in um, trying to keep everything, uh, the viruses, uh, the new in the new cases down. But he put in place kind of a, a not a travel ban, but if you travel basically out of New England, New York, or New Jersey, you have to um, fill out a form and submit it. And once you're back in the state, then you either have to uh, produce a negative COVID test or you have to quarantine for two weeks and there's $500 fines for those who don't follow the guidelines. Well, Rhode Island was one of the safe states up until Tuesday. So now we have to do that whole form and for one day it's just not worth it, which kind of stinks because I was going to try and head to Wickford and stop by the Mermaid's Pearl and my favorite wine is um, Gooseneck Vineyard and they're out of Wickford and they have a little tasting room and you can sit outside and they do wine tastings, um, which I love, but I was going to stop and pick up a bottle of wine while I was down there and that's not happening so and I know people are like oh just go to the Cape it'll be fine however I just noticed one of my lights are flashing hold on I'm gonna turn that off I'm hoping there wasn't a disco ball <laughs> going on there um anyways I don't even know oh so people were saying oh just go to the Cape but the Cape beaches have been crowded, and honestly, I'd rather just stay home than <laughs> take a chance. So, I will get a lot of um, knitting and sewing done on Friday. I'm just going to sit back and relax and just kind of enjoy the day. Maybe sit outside, have the kids outside. Can you do a fire pit during the day if it's not too hot? I know my husband's like, not until it's dark, but... Just maybe sit back, relax, and just go out. We've been spending a lot more time outside. I think it's just the change of scenery is nice. But I think that is all I have today. So I am hoping you all have a great week ahead and happy knitting. Bye.